Welcome back to class, everybody. My name is Anthony Sequera. This is session number two of eight sessions in our secure class here at stormwindlive.com. I'm thrilled to see all of our guests in the studio audience. They're here on time. That is awesome. And don't forget, also here on time are all of those elite mentors that are standing by ready to answer your questions the minute you have them. And don't forget, they're standing by outside of the class hours as well, should you have any questions or comments or concerns outside of the class hours. Just use that Elite Mentor link in your Stormwind Live campus. That'll get you to our mentors anytime, 24 by 7. Well, folks, we wanted to start this second session of Secure with a quick review. Let's jump up to a Catalyst Switch command line, and let's take a look at those commands that we would be required to know and the process that we would be required to know for that private VLAN feature. We said it's a fairly involved configuration, but it should be pretty easy for you once you break it down into the discrete steps. Step number one, remember, big potential gotcha here, set your VTP mode to transparent. I know what some of you are thinking out there. Anthony, I don't even use VTP. I could care less. All right, that's fine. Uh, you're already set to transparent mode, I presume. That's great. But just remember this. This, I think, is a pretty decent potential exam gotcha that they could ask you. Maybe they show you a configuration, ask you what is wrong with the config, Everything would be perfect with this config, I bet, except, oops, they're not in VTP transparent mode, and this feature is not going to be supported in that type of a situation. Okay, remember what we can do. We create our secondary VLANs. So you would come in and you would do something like VLAN 600, and you would say, okay, this is a private VLAN. Oh, and guess what? I'm so glad this happened. Unplanned event here, but this is awesome. In our practice rack, and we want to thank our friends at ProctorLabs.com. Uh, Proctor Labs is our equipment partner, as you probably know. These are where you're going to do your hands-on labs and things of that nature. Watch this. If I do a show version on this particular device, we are on a 3550, and guess what? Private VLANs aren't supported. How perfect. So we have one of those situations where, uh, you know, that good old feature navigator that we talked about in this class we have one of those situations where the particular feature that we want to take advantage of is not supported on the particular platform. All right, no problem. We've got other switches in this rack that we can utilize. Let's go over to, well, I'll make a connection to CAT2 real quick. We're not going to use CAT2 here, but let me just connect to it real quick. Okay, and then we're going to go over to CAT3. And CAT3, I do believe, is a 3560. Why do we care? Because that's going to support our private VLANs. So we look in here, and yes, we are on a 3560. Perfect. Okay, so now, uh, let me name this thing so we don't get lost. I'm going to go ahead and give this particular device a name of Switch3. And uh, before we drive ourselves crazy, let me go into the console port and turn on the synchronous logging. All right, and here we go. We're going to make sure we're VTP mode transparent. We are then going to create our VLAN 600, and it is going to be one of our secondary VLANs. So this is a community type of secondary VLANs. Remember what we said about the community type of secondary VLAN or private VLAN? It's going to allow members of that VLAN to speak with other members of that particular community. Pretty cool. All right, so private VLAN community on that one. Now let's do our VLAN... 
what is it? VLAN 400. And this VLAN 400, we're going to say, is a private VLAN structure, and it is an isolated secondary VLAN. We know the isolated secondary VLAN is for, really great name, it's for completely isolating those particular entities. Okay, the only thing that an isolated v VLAN member can communicate with is the promiscuous port. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our primary VLAN. In our example here, it's gonna be VLAN 200. We're gonna say private VLAN primary, and then don't forget to associate your secondary VLANs with this thing. That will be 400 and 600 in our example. So there you go. We can see that initially here, it makes good sense. Got to set ourselves to transparent mode. And then we create our private VLAN infrastructure. We create the secondary VLANs. We create the primary VLAN and then associate those secondary VLANs with the primary VLAN. Pretty cool. Now, what you would need to know from there is just how to do the particular port configurations. Let's start off by doing uh, our community example. So we would go to a particular interface, let's say it's fast ethernet zero slash 10, and we would say switch port mode private VLAN host. And then to make sure it's a community VLAN, we would say a community VLAN member, we would say switch port private VLAN. And then we would say host association. And we always give the primary first and then the secondary that it's a part of. So here we can see this particular port is in our community VLAN. Uh, let's do an isolated one real quick. Interface, fast ethernet zero slash 11. We're gonna say switch port mode private VLAN host. And then we're gonna do our association statement, this time with the secondary VLAN 400, our isolated private VLAN. Now, how about a promiscuous port? That's the last thing that we wanna see here. We go to an interface like interface fast ethernet zero slash one, and we say switch port mode private VLAN promiscuous. And then we do all of the private VLAN references. Watch this, switch port private VLAN mapping, and we mention everything we've got 200, 400, and 600. Notice here the particular syntax that you utilize. You mention your primary VLAN, and then you go ahead and list your secondary VLANs separated by commas. And that's how you would do your promiscuous port. Not that bad at all, right? Once you break it down into those discrete steps, it's not a bad configuration whatsoever. You look at the thing as a whole and it's like, whoa, that's just kind of uh, gibberish. Now, show private VLAN. Remember, uh, no, 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 no. I've got the wrong show command in my brain. Uh, in order to verify these structures, we say show VLAN private. Oh, let's see. Oh. I've duplicated the show. There we go. Show VLAN, private VLAN, and that's going to show us our types of secondary VLANs. And notice it's going to show us the primary VLAN and what ports are participating in those particular structures. Pretty cool. And another uh, type of command you could do is to say simply show VLAN private VLAN, and then we could say, oh, we want to just see a certain type, okay? We just want to see a quick 
look at the types of VLANs and their numbers that we have created in this private VLAN structure. Pretty cool. So quick review there of one of the main, main topics from the last event, and that was our private VLANs. Pretty cool.